Jackie, we've been in Croydon all day here. We've learned quite a lot, both about the police officer who lost his life and the 23-year-old who was detained here in the early, uh, early hours of the morning, much of which we're not yet in a position to report on. What we can say, though, from speaking to colleagues of that police officer is that he was a giant of a man. He was more a listener than a talker, we were told. And crucially, he was a police officer very much with his ear to the ground when it came to the local community community here in Croydon. This morning we learned of the shocking death of a much loved colleague, a long serving sergeant in the Metropolitan Police who was working last night in our Croydon custody suite. This morning the news that police chiefs dread having to impart, one of their own gunned down just doing their job. I have visited and spoken to our officer's partner together with other colleagues. The Met is a family. Policing is a family in London and across the United Kingdom. And today, we police are all mourning a great loss. It was just after 2 a.m. in the morning when the police officer was shot here at the custody centre in Croydon. The officer was taken to hospital, but unfortunately passed away there. A 23-year-old man was also detained at the scene here. He's in critical condition, was also brought to hospital. The police have asked us not to name the officer until his family are informed, which of course we're respecting. But as officers and members of the public arrived to lay flowers, a community support officer who knew the sergeant reflected on the type of man he was. He's the nicest man. He listens. Whatever circumstance you have, he just there, he listens to you. He just comes and sits next to you and you tell him your problem. And he's the best sergeant. Genuinely, real, real shock and pain in this community today that somebody who we felt was one of us has had his life taken away while he was spending his life looking after us. Then members of the public who didn't know him but felt like they did. You just laid flowers here. What, what was going through your mind? Uh, sadness. Sadness. Um, no, uh, no police officer deserves that. I mean, there's good and bad in all, but no, no police officer deserves to be shot and killed and they've got families and I've had my few problems with the police but nothing serious and I respect I respect the police for doing the job they do pal little is known at the moment about the 23 year old who was detained there are contradictory reports about whether he was arrested and brought to the custody suite or was summoned to a police station this sort of incident is thankfully relatively rare this is the eighth officer to be shot dead in the last 20 years but in one way, that makes it worse, makes it more painful. An investigation is underway by the Independent Office for Police Conduct. It will focus on the circumstances around this arrest. We'll ask whether and how the suspect was searched, and if, for example, he was handcuffed at the time. Questions for another time about how a country protects those who protect them. Horika Bryan there. Well, joining me now is Sarah Jones, who's Labour's spokesperson on policing. She's also a Croydon MP. And Peter Kirkham, a former Detective Chief Inspector in the Metropolitan Police. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Sarah Jones first, you. if you would. I mean, summed up by so many people in Porrick's piece, an unbelievable tragedy, the most extraordinary of circumstances. It's so sad, and I, I've just come back from uh, the custody suite, um, and so many people going there to lay flowers from all different parts of the community who had had their lives touched by this wonderful police officer or just wanted to pay their respects. I think the whole community is absolutely devastated, and, you know, the family of the police are... Uh, are, are really, you know, heartbroken tonight, and just our condolences go to, to the loved ones to the family and all those officers who worked with him for so long and knew him so well. Uh, Peter Kirkham, you know, we are reminded today how rare it is for an officer to be shot and killed, but this is no less difficult for the officer's family and for that wider police family that Sarah Jones is talking about. It, it is rare. Um, the, the first thing I'd like to say is that I'd add my condolences and thoughts to the, uh, the family, friends and colleagues of the deceased officer. Uh, it is rare. Uh, it's not unheard of. 
Um, these circumstances are extremely rare. I've not heard of these circumstances uh, before in 40 years associated in and around policing. Um, but yes, there are risks out there. There are dangerous people out there. There are dangerous weapons out there. And to a, <clears throat> to a significant extent, officers don't know when they're going to encounter those individuals. Sometimes they go to search an address or make an arrest knowing all about the person they're going to find uh, and have information about whether he's got weapons or whatever. Uh, but the vast majority of encounters are effectively random and they don't know one way or the other whether someone is a serious threat or not. And as the Met Commissioner Cresta Dick said today, the police is a family and that family will be in mourning today. Yeah, the, the police family will be grieving. They are grieving. Um, I've spoken to a number of officers today and, and communicated uh, uh, via social media with uh, many others. And um, yes, they, they are grieving. It will hurt for a long time, uh, obviously, particularly in and around Croydon uh, and the uh, Specialist Custody Command of the Metropolitan Police uh, who run the custody centres. Um, but throughout the whole of the Met, throughout the whole of the forces across the UK. And, and Sarah Jones, you will have got some sense of that today on the ground in Croydon, talking to officers, talking to the local community. Oh, absolutely. And the, the people who knew him and, and had worked with him, had had their lives touched by him in, in some way, all the talk was incredibly positive and everybody is just devastated. And of course, there will be questions about what happened and how it happened. But, you know, we have to reflect on, as Peter says, how dangerous this job is. There will be hundreds of people in, in our local area arrested every day and, and some of them with significant uh, issues, drugs, um, alcohol, mental health problems. There are, um, uh, there are a whole range of issues that the police are dealing with and, you know, we, we, we need to reflect how much they put their lives in danger for us and, and what an absolute tragedy. That, that something like this happens that we've not seen it, the like of which before in terms of a police officer shot in this way in, in the custody. Peter Kirkham, the IOPC have already launched an investigation and we clearly can't speculate on the details of what happened. But from a policing point of view, what for you are the key questions? Uh, the, the, well, um, there'll, there'll be two investigations. The IOPC uh, will be more interested in how the suspect um, came to be harmed, seriously harmed. Uh, it, it's tantamount to a death in custody, that level of injury. And so they'll be focusing on how that happened. And that obviously will include uh, how that firearm remained in his possession uh, all the way through to the point where he used it. Um, the police will be carrying out the more serious investigation in a way, uh, because that will be the murder investigation against the suspect um, uh, in relation to the murder of the police officer. Uh, and, and how the gun came to be there uh, would be far less significant to that murder investigation, it would be of interest, uh, but it wouldn't necessarily uh, be the core issue there. Uh, but management within the police service, they've probably done it already, had a quick look at the facts as they're known to see if there's any early learning to be adopted uh, across other custody suites, uh, or whether this is just one of those things uh, that inevitably happens when you've got an imperfect system uh, with imperfect laws operated by imperfect human beings and sometimes circumstances uh, conspire to produce a, a tragic outcome uh, such as this. Uh, it's catastrophic, it's tragic, uh, but they do happen sometimes. Peter Kirkham and Sarah Jones, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Thank